Hey everybody, it is Yishan here. Today I wanted to talk about the problem with some of the modern Yu-Gi-Oh card design that I have been seeing personally. And I'm not really a big fan of this card design and I sort of dubbed this problem the engine problem, which, you know, you've been seeing a lot of new cards just that we just just got engines everywhere, right? Right now the meta is like literally like decks that are just a bunch of engines together. And I wanted to sort of talk about this problem and, and why I think it is an issue. Um, and so, you know, let, let's start talk about what this whole thing is first, right? Remember, by the way, if you guys like the content, then please consider subscribing. Other than that, I'm just going to get right into it. And let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. This is definitely like a more of a discussion video. Okay, so... Engines and garnets. This is this is taking me back, right? And and I, I'm gonna argue to you in this video. I'm gonna try to prove to you that Konami keeps printing these cards. And the main drawback. I mean, these cards might have other drawbacks, but one of the main drawbacks, or a, a part of the card or group of cards, is that some of the cards suck to draw. That's just how it is. They just suck to draw. And I'm gonna argue that. This is really, really bad card design, and it is um, unfun for gameplay, but it is effective at selling cards, and that's why they keep doing it. Okay, so let's take a look. When did Konami start trending in this direction? Now, this is not exactly when they started. If someone wants to sort of point out the first example of a, a power card with a brick attached to it, please let me know. But I've been playing this game for a while. The, the earliest one I could remember happened on August 17th. A little bit of a history throwback. August 17th, 2015, Clash of Rebellions was released. And this was released with Brilliant Fusion. Now, immediately, immediately, players saw the potential of brilliant fusion i mean it just it's it's just it's just the most obvious case was brilliant fusion send uh perform mage trick clown and you would summon Sir gem knight seraphim you get a perform mage trick clown back onto the field and that's crazy because that's literally two monsters plus an extra normal summon for the price of one card now what was the drawback to Brilliant Fusion? Well, you had to play Gem Knights, and specifically you had to play a card called Gem Knight Garnet. Now you could play any Gem Knight normal monster or any Gem Knight monster, but they're all useless. This one just happened to have the highest attack. Now, this is the beginning, right? So this is Konami sort of like, okay, well, Brilliant Fusion is just a totally broken card. I mean, if you if you were allowed to play this card and you didn't have to play Garnet, right? Then it would just be better than basically every card ever printed. Um, and, you know, it's sort of, we're almost saying this card is quote unquote balanced. It forces you to play at least one Gem Knight card in your deck because it's a Gem Knight card technically, right? Technically speaking. So that's sort of the issue that I have, right? So uh, this is sort of the beginning. The, this kind of idea where you have a power card with a, a card you don't want to draw, you know, this this starts this trend and then what is the result of this trend why is this bad you know what's wrong with brilliant fusion because just because a car is powerful doesn't mean it's bad gameplay and here's what i think i think that one of the pinnacles of car design that every car design you know every card game is trying to do is trying to make the gameplay fun for both the winner and the loser of a game. That's really, really hard. Don't get me wrong. That's incredibly hard. But if you can do that, if you can make the gameplay both fun for the winner and the loser, then it's 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 really, it's honestly a great game. You have a great game on your hands. Um, unfortunately, when you see these cards, they're, they're like power cards. And every time you activate them, like if, if you're the one that's playing Brilliant Fusion and, and you activate it on me, I'm just going to be like, oh. Okay, we're going to go through a brilliant fusion game. This is going to be tough, you know. Um, and the activator feels great. But if you, you you know, let's say you're playing like Dragoon with the Verte Anaconda package. If you draw your bricks or you draw your Gem Knight Garnets, you're going to be pissed, right? So someone's always annoyed with this engine. And that's why I think it's really, really bad card design. Because someone is always unhappy. If you draw the cards... You're gonna be if you're gonna draw your power cards, you're gonna make Verte, you're not gonna draw your bricks. I'm like, well, that's just stupid. He can just do that with any two monsters. 
And if you dry your bricks, I'm going to be the one that's happy because I'm like, ha, that's what you get. You know, that's your punishment for playing Dragoon. And one of us is always going to be unhappy. And that's just not really, really, you know, it's it's not good card design. And that, that's why I think it's bad gameplay. Now, so that's sort of my point is that someone's always unhappy. You know, what else? The, the One of the biggest issues I see is that the reason and one of the reasons why these, you know, these cards sell well is because they're easy to include in decks. They make any deck more powerful. For example, uh, one great example is Plunder Patrol, right? Plunder Patrol is really, really good with the Brave Engine cards. And, you know, to be honest, no one, you know, it, 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 like the, these cards sell well because everybody needs them. Oh, so many decks need them. So that's why Dragoon sells well. That's why DP sells well. That's why the Brave Engine sells well. You know, they, they, they're they needed, right? And um, so that's sort of that, basically. Um, you know, decks sort of warp around these cards. And instead of, you know, being like an an, an engine deck, right? The, the way when these engines get so powerful, which Konami has been kept, keep on pushing these engine cards. more we, we, we started with Dragoon. Now we got DP. And then we got this Brave stuff. I mean, it's just... It doesn't be the game is not oh let me use my engine to support my deck it's what deck can best abuse the most powerful engine in the game right now and it sort of reduces diversity because you're just seeing these cards every single game right and and like think about it right we, we, our top deck is literally just chock full like one of the top decks chock full of engines right? I mean even like the the rose dragons right those are engines like it literally have like bricks in them like the uh, you know and so like you know it's it's just if you get them to resolve, it feels great. And if you don't, it feels crappy. And it's just, I don't like that kind of game design. Um, but, you know, that's sort of part of the problem. So that's really what's, what's happening. Is it's, it's, it's not, I have a deck, I have an engine that supports it. It's what decks can we just abuse the engine the best. And that's sort of how it works, right? So I don't like that. Are there any positives? Well, I do think it encourages really creative deck building. Like, for example, based based with the you know i don't, I can't remember all the the freaking you know acronyms in here we have like you know magician souls you know artifact the rose dragons you know italy I, I don't remember what these all stand for but anyway you know what i'm saying it's like cybers elegy these are really really impressive deck builds are they good for the game i don't know but if you enjoy trying to you know figure out the best deck in a format these engines give you a lot of room to experiment because they work with so many different archetypes, right? They, they just, that's, 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 that's just fantastic. But I think, and, and they sell cards because people want them because you kind of need them to, to, to keep up, right? And so that's really important to keeping the game alive. I mean, you know, the game lives, well, depending on how profitable it is, if it's not profitable, it's not going to be alive anymore. So, you know, that's good. You know, I've always sort of preferred that they make the staples cheap, um and the meta decks expensive but i understand you know if you want to incentivize players to sp spend money if you make the staples expensive and the the other surrounding cards cheaper people are going to be a lot happier because you just buy all the staples even though those are expensive you can sort of play whatever you want so if you're really like a competitive player that wants to try everything that's really great but if you're more of a casual player buying a new engine every couple months just feels kind of crappy you know it just kind of feels it sucks because like it's not like you're like just oh i got like some new support you know it's like oh i have to buy this support because it's like the best and you know um so that's sort of the sort of what that is right um so there, there are some positives but you know those, those those are really it basically um so some final thoughts right some final thoughts is i don't actually think all engine cards are bad one of one of the other sort of axes of cards with like bricks and engines is sort of a way to support older cards um like for example i think gamma gamma is a great example it's not like super powerful. you don't just activate it like oh i draw it boom activate. it's not like a spell card right it's a reactive card the the brick sometimes does something you know if you summon it out it's like rewarding it rewards you for like playing in a specific way you know like you know sometimes you can like trick your opponent you get no monster on the field but your opponent can also play around the card because they know you have a monster on the field, right? I really, really love that card design. I mean, sometimes, like, on the first... Gamma's worst card design is just on the first turn. I just activate it if I'm going second. But, like, it's a pretty interesting card, you know, in other facets of the game. So I really, really like that. You know, a lot of times you use bricks, like, to utilize, like, like legacy support. Like, for example, like, you know, Blue Eyes or Dark Magician decks. We have to find a way to use Dark Magician or else it doesn't really feel like a Dark Magician deck. 
or some like crappy monster, right? So it needs a lot of support. Um, that's another great way to use bricks, but I just think like, you know, this, just this, this idea that you can balance cards because you just, oh, there's some bricks. So it's technically not power. Like it's technically not strictly better than something you've seen. Like there is a cost to it. Right. Um, but you know, like the, the cost is something that you can easily just get around, um, is, is sort of like frustrating because it's, it's so simple. Like everyone can do it, right? You, you've got to make, maybe, maybe make the cost a little more like restrictive on these things, like on the brave tokens, um, you know, something, right. Something to make it so it's not just everywhere. Cause I think that rep repetitivity is like, oh, another right of air mature, another water, you know, you just, you see the card just too much. You know, and I think it can be really frustrating. So that's what I think the problem is. is it can be frustrating for players. And then if you draw the brick, you're frustrated. So it's just not good for anyone involved. Let me know what you guys think about this. This is, I think, is a really sort of interesting, you know, this is a way that Konami has been trending. They've got like the Therions coming up in the next sets. And, um, you know, those are maybe not as broken as Brave, but another just engine, splashable engine. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool because like people are playing a bunch of mixed archetypes, but they're not really mixed archetype because the decks sort of tell you how to build themselves. Anyway, you just play the best cards from each archetype um, and the deck sort of builds itself. Um, just sort of figuring out which archetypes to combine is the challenge, but that's a good challenge for some people. So, you know, who knows? All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Are there any, you know, any mistakes? Were there, were there cards before Brilliant Fusion? Are there other examples of engines with bricks that you can think of? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys all in the next video.